Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig by Stonemeyer Games with Bezier Games. If you've never heard of the game uh, the Cat Mad Ca Castles of Mad King Ludwig, which is a tile placement game, um, then that one is going to be based off of you individually building your own castle, attempting to score as many points as possible by making sure that you make secure connections that will score you points according to the pieces that your tiles connect to. You'll get a main area and you'll kind of grow out and build this castle, whether it be uh, outdoor courtyards or the underground basement area or a foyer or a library, and you're going to progress throughout the game where you're building this castle up to a certain point where you'll score points. Uh, this one here is very similar in nature in which you're going to have tiles, you're going to be picking them and placing them down, but instead of buying tiles or buying locations, in this game you'll draw nine, choose two of them, set the other ones aside, and then place them out into two different castles. You'll work with your opponent on the left and on the right, and you'll work cooperatively, and you're going to try and score points. And the way the game works is you'll have two rounds in which you'll draw your nine, take two, pass them, continue doing that in a draft sort of format, then you'll switch it up by drawing nine more and passing the other way. And you want to score points for both of your castles, and as closely as possible, because at the end of the game, you'll score points based on your lowest scoring castle, and the tie is based off of your highest scoring castle. So if I make 70 points and my opponent makes 70 points, our highest scoring castle being 90 and 80, the 90 will win. And you're going to be working together with each of your teammates slash opponents by attempting to build the highest scoring castles possible. You'll choose between those nine, selecting the best one for each castle, setting them side face down, revealing them all at the same time, and then placing them to score points, giving yourself between two castles scoring uh, throughout the game. After the end of the second round, whoever has the most points is the winner. Pretty straightforward game, a lot of different tiles to choose from, and a lot of different variations on how you make your castles. Let's go ahead and show you down below how the game is played, what you get in the game, and then I'll give you my review for Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig by Stonemeyer Games. And here we have the game Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. It has a two-player variant, but it plays up to seven, and currently I have it set up for three three players. When you're playing three players, you're simply going to be placing castles between each of the players, because when you play this game, you're working together with the people next to you in order to build the castle. So for instance, if I am playing in this area over here, then I'm going to be building this red and this green castle with these two players over here. And uh, these two players over here, maybe for instance, this player will go ahead and build these two, which will work with us two. And uh, this player over here will be these two castles, which will work with these two players. And so that's kind of how it works. You're also going to give each player one of these grand halls and they'll place it between them. So in a three player game, you'll have one of each of these in between the players. Also go ahead and give them one of these little wooden castles and place it down right above this area here. And then shuffle all these tiles out uh, that do not have the, uh, the little red borders here and place them in these areas here in sets of nine. After they're all shuffled up, you're going to go ahead and place a stack of nine in between uh, each player where the castles are. And leave the rest of them in an area in which people can reach. You won't be using any more of these tiles here. This stack over here is going to be mainly for the bonuses, as well as, of course, uh, you're going to have these guys here, which will be for not only bonuses, but additionally, when you're able to uh, place them down, uh, they'll score you additional bonus points. Uh, how the game works at this point here is pretty simple. You're going to have two rounds of gameplay. Round one, each player is going to gather nine of these tiles here from one of these stacks. So I have three stacks, so each player will gather one of these. Choose two of them, set them next to them, and then go ahead and pass these uh, to the next player's area in which they can go ahead and gather. So for instance, in this case here, I would pass these over to this player here. Uh, this player would gather maybe two of these tiles and pass these guys over here. And then this player over here will gather two tiles of their choosing, uh, and they will go ahead and pass these guys over here. So each player is basically going to be doing a draft of sorts. Uh, after you've gathered your tiles and they're face down, you are then going to go ahead and reveal them and place them in the adjacent castles that need to go. So in this case here, maybe I'd take these, I'd place this one over here, and I'd place this one over here. Uh, this guy over here would place this one over here, and this one over here, and this guy over here could place this one up above here. And um, let's see right here. And this guy could be like this one right over here. Uh, after doing that, then you're going to simply gather your next set of tiles 
choose two of them once again and repeat the process. And that's pretty much it. After you end up with all your, you run out of all your tiles here, there's only one remaining. You're going to discard those. Everybody's going to draw a new stack, going to go the opposite way when drafting, and then you've built your castle. Now, what is building a castle like? Well, when you build your castles, the main thing to note is any of these blue uh, blue tiles that have a blue border, uh, nothing can be placed above them. And whenever you're building tiles, uh, so for instance, I'll just go ahead and take these and use these as an example. Uh, you can go ahead and place them on this area over here and you'll be placing them like this. So you can never place a tile kind of like off to the side, it has to always fit in. You can place them on the bottom, but only if the tile says so. And this little tracker is going to explain how that works. So for instance, in this case here, you'll have food, living and utility and outdoor areas and sleeping areas. These all go on the main area and above. Uh, then you're gonna have the corridors, which can go below and above and adjacent. And then finally you have the downstairs, which can only go here or below. It has little arrows here. They all have their own colors as well. Each tile is also going to have a unique little marker over here on the right hand side, top right hand side, that can score points based on the tiles you're placing. There's going to be a scoring method for each of them. These are the basics explained here. Uh, you'll get like, for instance, this one here says you'll get one point per connected tile of a certain type. Uh, there's also bonuses for each three. For Once you place three of a specific type, like three food in a specific area, uh, you are going to be able to score a bonus. So for for instance, if this, tile, this castle here, this one was placed right here, that would be one, two, and three of the outdoor area. I would score that specific bonus for the outdoor area, meaning I get a fountain. So I would take one of these guys here and I could then place it in my castle somewhere. If you get five of a specific tile, then you'll get another bonus. And that bonus is to choose any of these guys here and place it in your castle. That will go for all of them. And uh, you're basically just trying to score as many points as possible. Each of these tiles has a unique uh, requirement in order to score points with them. Uh, so for instance, this one will score you two points uh, per specific red tile that is on the left and right hand side of this tile here. One point for each of the tiles around it that has a banner that has swords. And this one over here is gonna score you one point for each connected area that has a red, uh, orange square around it. This is a utility area. And so these guys all have their own unique scoring aspects. And based on how you build your castle is going to determine how many points you're going to be getting. And you always want to build as closely as possible. Ran out of all the tiles, draw three new stacks for each one for each player and go the opposite way, play through it all and then score points. There's some unique little benefits as well. You got these guys here. These are uh, uh, these are basically a bonus for a specific tile set. These will score you points per specific indicator uh, in your castle. Um, and then this one over here, these are cards that you'll be able to gather and they'll score you points as well. Like for instance, this is two points per downstairs area in your castle. These are also uh, linked or correlated to a specific tile set. And that's the game. It's really, really simple. When you're done playing the game, you'll take all the tiles, you'll put them all back here. Any of the blue bordered ones with the red banner area is gonna go up here. And then you can go ahead and once again, play again. They also provide this beautiful little scoring sheet here, which will explain each of the different rooms and you'll score them all individually as well as write your castle's name and they come with a front and a back for scoring so in a three player game you're going to end up using three of, of these guys here or actually you'll be using yeah three of these guys here for scoring your castle or, no, no, no you're going to be using one two three you'll be using one and a half of these guys because you have three specific castles you'll score and the way you win is one of these castles here is going to be your lower score so if i'm playing this guy here and i have a 40 point castle here and a 60 point castle here i will score 40 points 60 points and 50 points, he will score 50 points. And then we have 50 and 30, 50 points. And whoever has the most is the winner. If there's a tie, check your largest scoring castle and whoever has the highest largest scoring castle will win in that case. And there's also a solo variant as well. If you look throughout the book, it'll explain how the solo variant works. And you can go ahead and take a look at that as well as of course the uh, two player variant, or I should say, I don't think it has a solo. It has a two player variant to the game, uh, which you can go ahead and play as well. And it has specific rules as to how that is, is structured as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about my review now. Between Two Castles is basically a drafting game with tile placement. If you enjoy games like Carcassonne and drafting mechanics, this is something you should definitely take a look at. It's a very unique game in which I have never seen a game where you play with two separate opponents who are also working cooperatively with you to build the best castle. Because in the end, you need to make sure that your castles are as high as possible because you're always going to score the lowest scoring castle of the two that you choose. But the other one's still relevant because it is a tiebreaker and tiebreakers happen a 
bit in this game due to the fact that most likely your lowest scoring castle could be paired with another player. Uh, the high quality components make this game stand out. You're gonna be getting game trays along with unique specific tiles that you'll utilize throughout the game, which will have spaces for nine in each of those areas. You'll take them out during the drafting portion, pick two, pass. It's really, really simple as to how the game works and how it plays out. The setup is very easy as well. Uh, the most complex aspect of this game is punching everything out, shuffling them all together, and then placing them where they need to go. But when it comes to setup and teardown, the game is easy as pie. So once you get through the very first process, everything else just kind of flows. You're also going to be getting beautiful, unique little wooden castles, which you'll use to reminisce amongst yourselves uh, between the two players that you're playing with. It's also a good place where you can place your tiles underneath after you've chosen the two that you want. There's some unique foyers or grand halls, these guys here, that will score you points uh, based on the locations that you place specific tiles. And of course you're working together, which is a nice little twist as well, because you're not working fully together, but you're also not not working together. The only person you're never working together is people that are not adjacent to you. So the larger the games are, the more people who you can't really have control over and you're just kind of passing them tiles, hoping they don't get what they do, what they, what they want. And so you can kind of hate draft. But for the most part, you're focusing on the two castles that you already have to deal with, with people that are working next to you. And you're going to be kind of uh, cooperating with them. Now you can't speak uh, before, while you're looking through the tiles and while you're choosing them, but during the placement aspect of the game you can which is a nice little twist as well you want to make sure that the castle you're building with each of your opponents is as closely in points as possible and as high as possible as well because if you get one that's 100 billion points and one that's two points you're only scoring those two points which is terrible and you want to avoid that as much as humanly possible if you can go score a castle that's like 70 points and 85 points that's a great score for this game because it means you worked really well with both of the people next to you in order to make the best castles possible for each of them you can't skimp out on one of them, which makes the game a very, very unique in, and, and different experience compared to a lot of other tile placement games involved. Uh, other little aspects too is when you're placing down tiles, you want to have the same types of tiles in each of the castles because those score you bonuses and bonuses are magnifique in this game. You want to get those bonuses. Each of the different types of the locations are going to present you with unique bonuses and the fact that you're going to get this little player reference card is very nice because it explains what you're going to be getting for each of them and of course on their third that's a unique one and on their fifth tile of the same type that's one of your choosing which gives you these different ones whether it be the grand foyer whether it be the tower or whether it be the fountain and these all score in their own way another thing that's interesting too is any blue bordered tile is going to be the top end of a tower it's the one thing that kind of screwed us up you have to remember that you always want those to be as high as possible and uh, because if you don't you're not going to be able to place things on top of those spaces so you can limit yourself greatly by placing those outside areas and those three main locations that usually are provided to you by benefits. Another cool interesting aspect of the game is the different aspects of the bonuses involving like cards where you're going to get bonus points when you gather these cards and you should utilize them. If you can get these, these are going to be very beneficial. There's also the characters or caretakers that you can participate in gathering when you select certain tiles as well. Those are very nice to have. Each tile represents a different way to score points, which in general is very, very good when you focus on specific types when building each of your castles. You don't want to kind of uh, make an abundance of all different types of tiles in every way, but they all kind of do co coincide with each other in certain ways. Uh, you're going to have portraits, as w uh, which is like a symbol on the right-hand side, as well as you're going to have a type of tile. And so it might say, this type of tile scores this many points whenever you have this type of tile next to it. Or this type of tile scores more points when you have all different types of tiles next to it. So in some senses, you do want to work depending on the type of tiles that you place, regardless of... Uh, what your opponents are doing across from you, you're going to want to place the specific tiles that are going to benefit your castles each separately. Uh, sometimes you'll have to choose between two tiles that both help each castle equivalently, or uh, one tile that's going to work better for both of them as opposed to another one. And that's going to come down to what you think uh, each castle's score is. And you can kind of tally up in your mind to a certain extent. Uh, of course, it'd be a little too much if you were to go too mathematical into it, but you do want to decide what's best for you overall. And then 
then nextly, what's best for both castles so that you can score as many points. Very, very cool. High quality components, beautiful style artwork. This is a game that's so unique and interesting that I'm going to be keeping it in my collection for quite a while because it's something that pretty much anybody's going to be into playing. It's really simple, really straightforward. And if you like tile placements, it's a strong recommendation. If you enjoy games like the Castles of Mad King Ludwig, this one here is another must get for your collection because it is not the same game. It plays completely differently, but it still has the same feel of tile placement and castle building. I really, really recommend Castles of Mad King Ludwig. If you like high quality games by Stonemaier, if you like the beautiful castle building thematic aspect of the game, if you like unique building placements and scoring points based on strategically set and placed, uh, you know, a strategic mind, this is another game for you as well. And if you want a game that's really quick, that only plays in two rounds and gives you the feeling of building not only one, but two castles with two people that you're working together with as you're also working in opposition with. A solid, wonderful title, something that I'm going to be giving my seal of approval for Between Two Castles uh, of Mad King Ludwig. Great game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig by Stonemaier Games, working with Bezier Games. A wonderful addition, link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and like this video, go ahead and subscribe to this video and hit the bell notification button. It greatly helps us out and allows us to keep making more content like this. So I do appreciate anything that you guys are willing to do to help us out. You can also let us know in the comments below if you've already played this game, what you think about the game and whether or not you think somebody else would be enjoying of it or or if you've never played the game, what maybe uh, sparked your interest. Go ahead and go ahead and join unfilteredgamer.com. We've got blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more written reviews for games that are not even on our YouTube channel. So if you want something different or want written commentary uh, about games that are not for me, that is the place you can go ahead and take a look at as well. Moonshell, a mermaid game, my wife's game is coming along. We've finally gotten all the art. We're going to get manufacturing coming in very shortly so we can see the... Uh, finished manufacturing prototypes. And then from there, we'll go ahead and get them started for production so we can get the stuff sent out. We'll have an update very, very shortly for you guys. Thank you guys, Patreons, as well as people who joined our Discord and our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Join us on YouTube, Facebook, and of course, Twitch. Any platform will work. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to building two castles in Mad King Ludwig's territory with you next time.